giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. So today, first revealed the teaser trailer for the FTC game called Ultimate Goal, in all caps. The teaser trailer had various shots of exercises from pre and previous year's robots. Were there any clips that stuck out to you from the teaser? What hints do you think for next year's game could be found in this video? Uh, if you have any suggestions in chat, uh, make sure to let us know. I know somebody in chat said that it's going to be like Rebound Rumble. Um, I'd love to see a rebound rumble for FTC, but what do you guys think? Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I think there's a lot of like I I kind of agree with all the people saying like there's going to be like a low and high goal or like a shooting game or something like that. I think that would be really exciting and like a new challenge for a lot of people since the last shooting game was Velocity Vortex, and so like now all of those people have cycled out uh, of FTC, so it would be like completely new people now competing in this. I think that could be really exciting. I don't think it would be completely new people competing in this because you could have folks that were in seventh and eighth grade competing oh, in that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't think yes. about that. So oh, they can definitely take a look at those notebooks from back then in reference <laughs> and go, hmm, yeah. well, let's just make a bigger, batter Velocity Vortex bot, hmm? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Um, I mean, another thing, like, obviously, like, with the nets, I think that, like, in the logo, there's the net, and I think that helps, uh, like, with the whole shooting idea. But uh, Alfonso, Alfonso and Sam, any anything to point out? Yeah, so also, like, yeah, like, I agree that they show a lot of things with basketball, but I also see a lot of things with, like, the track and, like, running. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if they're going to try to implement something sort of like a race, I guess, like oh, where teams really have to move around the field in, like, a certain speed by a certain mm -hmm. time. But, yeah. I, I know you guys had, like, an extremely quick bot in Rover Ruckus. <laughs> Are you looking yeah. to do something like that again? <laughs> Um, I mean, depending on the game, if the if the game's going to require that and we're going to have to move around the field pretty quickly, and if there's like a lot of robot interaction, we'll probably go for that, but we'll see. Uh, yes. FTC3208 and FRC568 asks, when do we know when Game Manual 1 will be released this season? I do think that FIRST has announced when they're going to release Game Manual 1, but if it's anything like previous seasons, uh, it's usually the first or second week of July, but with COVID, who knows? Um, yeah, maybe July 14th is what somebody said in chat. Um, don't really know. Uh, one of the things that really stuck out to me about this teaser is there was, A, somebody doing pull-ups, which just immediately I was thinking hang. So yeah, yeah. it's been two years since we've had a hang, so it would make sense that we get another one. And then um, everything, like the fact that they use the word goal in the name of the season, right? Ultimate goal. Like the only sport that I really think of when I hear goal is soccer, right? Like whenever you score you hear a goal uh, so i'm thinking maybe it's like a shooting game where you have to like pass things around uh kind of like what they did in uh aerial assist for frc where you have to work with your partner to score things by shooting them can, can i point out something on here that really stuck out to me from an frc perspective mm -hmm. is right on here in a second they're going to show uh competitors and collaborators and for those who have been in the frc space know about uh cooperation points and how those have worked before. And they haven't always been very well received, but I would be very interested to see if there's something uh, in regards to if both alliances can do them, if there's going to be points scored uh, for that, or if you get maybe a bonus ranking point for having both alliances accomplish an objective together. Oh, so that's what the cooperation point is? That I mean, it has been in similar. So if you go back in previous years, there have been ranking points. Uh, do that there's been uh, like in 2015 you got bonus points for doing that uh, but in other years yeah there's actually been uh, uh, 2012 if you're going to relate it to that year um, was actually if you had a robot from each alliance balance the middle bridge and qualification matches you got a bonus ranking point from that oh wow that'll yeah. be interesting and with something like that, it would definitely make the ranking system in FTC a little bit more leveled because then you have a little bit more to play around with when it comes to ranking points. And tiebreaker points aren't just your be-all, end-all, um, which they've not been, at least in my opinion, a great way to separate teams that are tied at the ranking point level. Um, so that might be something interested. Maybe they are looking at changing the ranking system, especially since everything about FTC this year and first in general has been about, quote, changing the game. Mm -hmm. I also, also like the, uh, 
I also like the little tribute they had to like a bunch of teams in there. Like I know we saw gluten free brainstormers and like a ton of teams in there. I thought that was pretty cool. Yep. And another thing that was announced today was how much the field is going to cost. Andy Mark has put up a pre-order for the field um, with the logo. They are keeping the $450 field cost for a full field, which is, I think, exactly what it was last year. But they are selling partial fields, which are both blue or red. Um, it's not like a half field or something. It's a partial field. So uh, take that as it is. I don't know if there's anything to read into that. <laughs> something that I also saw really interesting right now, just seeing the teaser again, is that they have a little, tiny little clip of somebody dribbling in between like cones. So I'm wondering if they might place obstacles on either side of the field and just have teams try to navigate through those on their way to score or something. I am just hoping that the reset between each game isn't a gazillion pieces. <laughs> Lord help us all. <laughs> yeah, I think overall, hopefully, that like, I mean, people, at least in the FTC community, have been dying for a shooting game. Hopefully, we'll get something like that. Uh, blue 12, blue second. Bluetooth. Bluetooth. <laughs> Bluetooth 1000 says maybe a Vex 2016 S game, except where we are using tennis balls. Um, I believe the Vex 2016 game was uh, like the net, nothing but net, um, where they were just shooting full court across diagonals. Pretty <laughs> empty field. Such a fun game to watch. Um, I wouldn't mind if they did that. That game was awesome. So having an FTC scale robot playing nothing but net. That would be a pretty fun thing. Like, look at that empty field and how much interaction you can have, but also, like, how far you can make shots. I'm just going to say at champs would... level, though, that got actually kind of boring because there would be no field elements left. Yeah, I mean... Like, all field uh, elements were scored. There's really nothing to do. They would have to figure out how to recycle the elements like they did in Velocity Vortex, but Velocity Vortex is considered one of the best games in FTC. Huh. I could also see them... Like, I feel like if they could use balls, like they use balls, they could go back to like the wiffle balls that they use in um, R01, like yeah, that style. I mean, they've had those, uh, they've had those same relic recovery, or not relic recovery, the rubber ruckus, the rubber ruckus, rubber ruckus those white wiffle yeah. balls. Yeah. They've had those in so many games, but they've never shot them. They've only shot the blue and red ones. So maybe you shoot the white ones this time. Maybe possibly, but I'm starting to think that maybe. I know if we do uh, in-person competitions, which we'll get to in a little while, um, I'm wondering if our PPE is going to change as well. And so maybe instead of we wear uh, safety glasses, we wear face shields for not only COVID, but if we're having a shooting game, you know, I don't want to get hit in the nose and end up with a bloody nose, you know, so. Yeah. All things to think about. Uh, all right. Uh, anybody so, else have any thoughts on this? I just want to jump in. I'm sorry to, to do so so many times, yeah. but I do want to give a, a brief plug for FTC to the uh, Animark Robot Relief Fund uh, that they've had, uh, which this is specifically grants for FTC teams uh, that they're starting out with. So they're accepting donations uh, from people. Apparently one person donated $5,000. But So if you Whoa. have $5,000 to give, then you know you can go ahead and do that. But uh, yeah, so the, it's, it's a way to both support Animark, who of course, as many suppliers are in, uh, pretty dire straits right now with the uh, changes, especially in FRC with there being the same game recycled again next year. Uh, but if you're interested, if you have the means to donate to the Robot Relief Fund, go check it out on Andy Mark's website. Um, you can donate there, and they're essentially taking the money they get and then granting those to, to FTC teams to purchase uh, uh, Andy Mark uh, parts and field elements or whatever you want at Andy Mark. So it's an interesting idea uh, that they have and a good way for you to support both Andy Mark if you're a fan of them, uh, which I definitely am, and uh, also to uh, help support teams. Awesome. Yeah, so uh, earlier this week, First in North Carolina announced that FTC competitions for the 2020 to 2021 season uh, will be in a remote format. This email also goes on to explain how First will be giving the option to hold remote competitions to all regions and will be releasing guidelines on these remote competitions. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on this? Oh, uh, yeah. So like I was, I was saying earlier too is like, with remote competitions, I think it's like a really good idea, but I'm not really sure how sort of the high level and like the intensity of the game will carry on to remote competitions because you don't have that like sense of competition mm -hmm. there every like with you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, 
uh, I know we had like virtual MTI this past uh, week and like based on the, how that went, like I know uh, some, like I've heard some people saying that like the, it was like a logistic, logistically, like it wasn't uh, that great. And, like it was kind of difficult to get set up and everything, but I mean, yeah, Sam, you were saying something. Uh, yeah. On top of that, I feel like a lot of the FTC games in the past few years has been, you know, robot to robot interaction and mm -hmm doing these events virtually really gets rid of that aspect entirely. And I feel like it would change the meta entirely. Um, and it would change a lot of like the basis of design for a lot of these robots. So mm -hmm. it would change things up immensely. Yeah. Yeah. One uh, of Ingrid, the things... as a, or Ingrid, uh, as a ref, like, how do you see this? Oh, good gosh. Uh, logistically, yes, it's an absolute nightmare, at least on my end of things. <laughs> um, depending on how they do it, uh, if, if it's less people at the competition, you just have your robot fixers there and everyone just remotes from home or whatever in a super distance, maybe that'll work out fine. But if it's just, hey, drop your robot at the competition and let the volunteers do all the rest of the work, that is going to be incredibly rough on us. But if they say, hey, let's go entirely with simulation, then I just walk into my room here and I just get my coffee and I just sit here in this chair and I go click, click, click and not have to spend any gas money ever. So that's nice. <laughs> Yeah, so when I was reading this, um, two things came to mind. Uh, first of all, the fact that FIRST is releasing guidelines, FIRST HQ is releasing guidelines on these offline competitions, seems like they think it's probably going to happen that multiple regions are going to need these offline competitions that are um, not in person just due to COVID and safety first as always. Um, if it is unsafe due to COVID, they should do these competitions online because it's better than nothing. So we'll take anything we can get. Beggars can't be choosers. Uh, but another thing that I was just thinking, um, initially first was going to release the teaser, I think two weeks ago, and they pushed it back to today. So that got postponed. What they could have done is they could have made some adapting changes to the game to make it so it works better in an online setting where teams aren't necessarily interacting with each other, but rather it's more like an FLL game where teams are working by themselves to solve the tasks and they make the tasks ridiculously hard or some way that it recycles elements. That way there's no scoring cap. Um, that way teams are trying to beat themselves and it's like an individual solo robot and the most efficient robot wins. Yeah, it takes away from the robot-to-robot -robot interaction, which is always fun, and it takes away the audience, but I think it's better than nothing. Right, you're still learning, you're still competing, you still can show uh, what you can bring to the table with your team and individually. And it could be that the game makers, uh, seeing how big this COVID stuff blew up and how it's not going away, folks, um, Maybe they did a change to the layout of the field to make that possible, or at least make it a less high contact type game. And so maybe they still keep the same skills that they want these robots to be able to perform, but making it, you know, just as difficult, just changing things up a little bit and tweaking the rules because they still are working on creating that game in March and in April. There's a reason why they wait a long time to release the game. And they give out a teaser as, hey, this is a theme, but they still release it in September. Yeah, <clears throat> something sort of like what you were saying with the FLL would also be really cool to see how that influenced team, certain teams' designs instead of sort of planning for a more robot interaction, instead mm -hmm. of plan just on maximizing their own points and just seeing if that shifts some teams that consistently do like a six-wheel drive, maybe they'll switch to like Mechnum or something like that. Um, but the thing with like like the FLL type idea that like I'm having a little trouble with is like if the field is still four hundred and fifty dollars like that's not I don't know if that's like extremely like accessible for like just teams like because teams will probably have to be smaller because like they won't be able to be hosted at schools or anything like that and so like I feel like there could be a little trouble with funding there if like every single team had to buy a four hundred and fifty dollar field or you know like even like the replacement if it was uh, expensive or not. Well, or even some could... teams are, are relying on small businesses in their community or even other businesses that are maybe medium-sized. Those businesses are struggling as is right now. So where are those funds going to come from other than possibly grants and such? Or yeah. it could be something where, like, the game evolves. Like, until Worlds, no robot interaction, and then at Worlds, 
robots go in the 4v4 format. Oh, wow. Where the game changes throughout the season. It's something that, that they could Game do. changers! Wow! <laughs> yeah, that was very intense. <laughs> but another thing I was going to bring up is, like, it would be kind of like Recycle Rush. And Tyler's not going to give me a hard time because he loves Recycle Rush. But, um... Like, you could do a game sort of like Recycle Rush where it's isolated. I mean, yeah, there was a little bit of interaction once you got to, like, the very, very high levels. But the robots were mostly isolated. And you could play that game, one robot doing its own thing, and you would see how high they score. And then once you got to the higher levels of competition, that game was built so you could add two more robots, three more robots on each side, um, and have it work. Forever morphing rules. Yes, I, I totally love this idea. <laughs> Yes, I need more things to be on the toes on top of all the remoting things. Thanks. I really appreciate it. <laughs> all right. Anybody have any last thoughts on uh, these online competitions, especially what North Carolina has said? Because I think that was a pretty important and telling uh, email that was sent out. Yeah. That's well, something that I'm oh, something that I'm also interested in to see is so right now they have the preliminary plan of doing remote competitions, like you said, if they'll eventually want to switch to in-person competitions and like if they would keep the game the same or not maybe well yeah, here's I, another i go ahead sorry i think us as a society don't know enough about when this covid pandemic is going to be over and there's too many unknown factors and i love that north carolina is being upfront with the teams hey we're going to be doing this online um we're trying to be safe um so just i think if affiliate partners let their teams know it's going to be online but they're willing to adapt maybe later in the season if we do get a vaccine or we get something like a big dip in covid they can slowly shift over to a in-person competition that would be something i'd love to see from first mm -hmm. well here's another possible idea for an online version of uh competition so a couple of days ago, Team 11039 Innovators released a software package called Teledrive, which allows a driver in a remote location to control their robot using the internet. They claim that the latency is less than 25 milliseconds. This could be an alternative to competitions to help maintain social distancing since not all drivers would need to be at the competition. Currently, to install Teledrive, many modifications have to be made to the current FTC software. The innovators are proposing that first changes the robot controller application to allow Teledrive for the option of limited attendance for in-person FTC competitions. So this adds a whole nother level to it. I looked at their website on their proposal for this and um, they said it would be something as simple as dropping your robot off at the competition and then con you know, controlling it from home. Well, that comes back to the question of what if your robot breaks at competition? What are the volunteers going to do? How are we going to fix this? So it could be that you bring two or three different people and a coach or something to it, the competition that are there for simply setting up and fixing and accepting an award maybe. And then we do an elbow high five line. Who knows? So... I think that one of the ways that this could go down is even if like let's say you have these in-person competitions one of the places that has the most dense population of people in one place is the fields right so even if you're all at a competition let's say you're in a big gymnasium and you're just driving your robots from the pits that would still allow social distancing measures to go into place at competitions um, but when looking more deeply into this and since i have an understanding of the control system for ftc there would need to be significant changes made to the robot controller and so they the innovators are asking that these changes be made to the uh, robot controller app and release for next year and if this were to happen it would require robots to run over the internet they sit, they claim that it's 25 milliseconds ping but I'm kind of skeptical of having 25 robots, 32 robots yeah. at a competition, all connected to the internet, bogging down the Wi-Fi connection um, and how well that would play out. I don't know. What are your guys' thoughts on this? No, I mean, I think you make a really good point uh, talking about like how like when you have multiple robots, because I mean, I know like when we practice at our field, like, you know, it's like really low ping times. And then suddenly at competition, you like you have all of these spikes and like at States this year, it was like a lot of teams got affected pretty heavily by it. So, I mean, I think that would be like a big part of it. 
Yeah, so we so we just opened up a poll in chat uh, asking if teledrive is viable to scale. Uh, so far, most people have said no, but we'll see how it goes on, and we'll let you know the results. Yeah, and then I'm also like skeptical on like so you said like 25 to 30 teams, but that's like on a smaller scale. If worlds is still remote <laughs> by like the end of next year, like that's 300 teams operating on how many Wi-Fi's? I don't know. Well, also you yeah. got to consider like most of these places are being hosted in gyms at schools. Yeah, I mean, with you, you need a very solid Wi-Fi connection, which most competition venues don't have in the first place. And then you're also going to need to have teams invest in laptops, right? Like some teams yeah. may not have the resources. Some teams may just be using Chromebooks because that's what they have in their school. And yes. I don't know. I'm not 100% if Teledrive works on a Chromebook. Um, I still have to look into that. But I think that it's something that it could easily give a big advantage to a team that's more well off um, than a team that's not doing very well. Um, overall, I think that it's a cool idea. It might actually be great for driver practicing because mm -hmm. teams can't yeah. meet in the same place. But for a competition venue, I think it will be a little bit harder. Yeah, um, our Van Smith in the chat, uh, I think he brought up a good point is he said you don't even get 25 millisecond ping with direct Wi-Fi at competitions. No way over the Internet is it even close uh, to 25 milliseconds. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. And so our poll results are in. 77% uh, of you said that Teledrive is not viable to scale. Um, we still had 14% and 9% of you guys say it's not sure. And yes, you think it is viable to scale. I think it would be a cool feature to implement into the FTC robot controller regardless. I mean, it doesn't really hurt. Maybe it'll increase download times to your phone by a second or two. But uh, I don't know whether I would trust it for actual competitions. Yeah. Maybe in the future. Maybe five years from now, it'll be great. But at the moment, uh, pretty, yeah. pretty sketchy, scary. I think the Just closest you could that. get to that is if you went VR at some point um, to, to do that. And actually, at, like, you could wear – or not even VR, but, like, similar to how drone racing is, where you could put on goggles and get some sort of viewpoint uh, and, and do it for – regardless if it's a first person, third person, or off the side or something like that. <laughs> that would be right. so cool. <laughs> FP, FPV, FTC. Yeah. That would be pretty fun. <laughs> put the camera on the robot. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so one of the last pieces of news that we have to cover today is last year there was a huge movement to push the Krista McAuliffe Commemorative Coin Act through the National Congress. Um, and it created a commemorative coin for Krista McAuliffe, the teacher astronaut who died in the Challenger accident. All proceeds from the coin will go towards FIRST. And just recently, uh, a final design for the coin was released and is waiting for final approval from the U.S. Treasurer. Um, an issue date has not been set, but this coin, the design that Tyler right now has up on screen, is the design that um, the family of Chris McAuliffe has uh, recommended and many of the people designing coins have recommended. What do you think about this design? I personally really liked how it included the students and Chris McAuliffe on it because yeah. a big part of it was teaching. Um, but I wanted to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I, I mean, some, something that I thought was really cool on the coin is that it has the name, her name, like very big on the coin, on like the front face. So sort of just honoring that legacy so you know who she is. And so people just don't look at the coin and just wonder like, who was that, right? Like it honors her directly. Right. Really cool. I mean, other than that, I mean, I see that, like, first put their logo on there, which, I mean, I think it's, if, if that's what the family wanted, like, it's definitely what should happen. And overall, like, I think it's a really amazing design. Yeah, and so um, I know one of the changes that happened from the coin, uh, from the initial bill to when it was passed, was um, the first, the, the proceeds from the coin will now go directly to the first organization. Um, initially, it was supposed to go towards first teams, uh, but now it's going to be helping the organization continue its events. Uh, what do you guys think about that? I mean, I think like right, like right now, obviously, these are like trying times for businesses. And so like, I think it would be, it would probably be better for like first as a whole to be able to hold competitions instead of like, ev like, it would be more important for first to hold competitions than like some teams that aren't able to continue because they don't get grants, I think.
Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.